Merry meet everybody. It is Poe, your Friday hostess, and you are watching Witches of the Moon. This week we are discussing um, a year and a day, and um, I guess our basic understanding of what it is and maybe what it means to us, that sort of thing. Um, as far as I'm aware, a year and a day was a, uh, originally it was a kind of pre-initiation into a coven. Um, it was something that uh, covens would do for um, prospective new um, members to um, give them an idea of what it would be like to kind of dedicate themselves to the craft and really immerse themselves in the knowledge and information. Um, the year in a day um, is, of course, 366 days, and from what I understand, I, I, I think I have this right, um, the 366 days was um, solely for study. It wasn't, um, it wasn't necessarily, the, they kind of abstained from doing any like ritual work or spell work or anything like that they kept strictly to the curriculum, um, the studies, the knowledge, and gaining an understanding of that for 366 days before um, you had your initiation into the coven. Um, but the 366 days, a lot of people are like, where the hell did they get 366 days? Where did a year and a day come up? Well, from what I understand, it has something to do with, and I, I please forgive me if I'm saying her name wrong, um, Kierdwen, I think is her name, and she is the goddess of kind of all witches, all of the witchy beings on planet. Um, she is kind of the mother to them, and... I, I believe, and, and please, if I'm wrong, please correct me because I don't want to be giving out like some willy-nilly information about this, but I read a story um, during my year in a day uh, about Kirdwin and her apprentice, and um, what happened was she basically was working on this potion of sorts, this kind of concoction in her cauldron, and um, she had to leave. She had to go away. She had to leave for some reason, I can't remember why, and she told her apprentice that, um, that they needed to tend the cauldron until she returned. So every day, the apprentice, that's all the apprentice did, I believe, was tend to the cauldron, stirring and whatever else. And after 366 days, Kerdwin returned, and um, after that time that the apprentice had with the cauldron, kind of learning how to stir it just the right way, um, maybe adding more things to the cauldron, to the concoction that was in there, she saw that her apprentice had kind of um, developed into their own after this 360 day, 66 day period of her being gone and the apprentice spending this time by themselves kind of understanding things, kind of working through it themselves. So that's the story of, or at least sort of, a variation of it as to why we use 366 days as the time frame for that. Um, do I think it's necessary? I only feel that it's necessary if one, you are joining a coven, that that is one of their kind of rules, um, in order to join, you do the 366 day study, or you are a solitary and you are called to do it. Now, the thing about being a solitary is that, like I said, in the beginning, this was pretty strictly a coven practice, um, but as time went on, more people started doing solitary work, 
I believe it was just kind of picked up in that so in that kind of trend um, by solitaries but it is believed that it's not necessary for a solitary to do that it's really kind of a specification of joining a coven however I have done my year in a day I did my year in a day um, Oh my goodness, it'll be a year ago, April, April 2nd, I hope I'm getting that date right, I believe it was April 2nd, um, was a year ago on this April the 2nd, um, I completed my year in a day, and it was strictly study. I did not do ritual. The only ritual that I did was I honored my ancestors on Samhain um, the October before I completed my my 366 days, but that was the only thing that I did. Um, they, I, I've read in books that, you know, maybe you shouldn't set up an altar until close to the end or Maybe you shouldn't start really getting into like, you know, candle magic or anything like that until close to the end. However, being a solitary, we kind of, we mold our path here a bit. And um, again, I, I feel like I'm a broken record when I say this, but I really strongly feel that on this path, we are free to use our intuitive selves just as much as we use our mental selves, our emotional selves. So that's what kind of guides us. And I think that if it feels right, like it did for me, you're not necessarily supposed to do a ritual during your 366 days, but I did because it felt right. And um, I also at, Oh, I'd say it was almost halfway, almost exactly halfway through my 366 days, I set up an altar and um, I changed it. I didn't do any like seasonal rituals or anything like that. All I did was I changed out the, the items with the seasons that were on the altar. Um, and another thing is that with a year and a day traditionally, you are in you're dedicated before you begin the 366 day study however what i chose to do was i chose to wait until the end because i wanted to make sure that i was understanding all the information that i was receiving and also um i wanted to make sure that in doing that study for a year and a day I wanted to make sure that that was something that I, I absolutely wanted to dedicate myself to um, before I did that, before I actually dedicated myself. I wanted to go through the learning process first, although I am still learning, um, but I wanted to go through that strict 366 days first before I dedicated myself to um, my path in paganism. So. Um, yeah, so do I think it's absolutely necessary? Probably not. If you feel called to do it, I think that it's important that you do. There is a reason that you are being called to do that. It could be because maybe you need to refine your, your knowledge base a little bit. Maybe you need to get information in line. Maybe you just need a break from the ritual stuff, the spell stuff, just focusing on the learning process whatever it is, um, or you're just starting out and you want to do it the traditional way, whatever it is, if that's why you're being called to it, then do it. Um, but if you don't feel like it's necessary for you, unless you're joining a coven that requires you to do that, it's not necessary. Um, I felt like I had to do it because I was getting back into it very heavily after several years of not being, I was atheist for several years and I got back into it. Um, so I decided I was going to settle down. I was going to hunker down and just do it, just full on barrel through it, just do it. So that's what I did. Um, but yeah, 
um, and it, it was quite the learning process. I learned so much in that 366 days about not just about the craft. See, and that's another thing when I say knowledge and understanding, it's not just about the craft, it's understanding yourself. It's understanding your comfort level. It's understanding where you fit in, in the grand scheme of what it is that we do as pagans. So, um, yeah, it, it taught me not just about the craft itself, because I learned a wealth of information about that, about that in particular, but it also taught me about discipline. It taught me about my ability to stick to something and finish it and see it through. Um, it, to me anyway, and you know, it might sound like I'm glorifying it and I'm not trying to, but it was difficult to just stick to the curriculum, you know, just stick to the study, especially because I didn't have a teacher. It was all me. I was every single day. I was reading books online, talking to people, asking questions. It, it wasn't, I had a teacher and I was taking classes. I was self-motivated. I was a self-starter in this, in, in completing this. And it taught me a lot about myself. So um, there are many benefits to doing it. But, you know, again, it's totally up to you. So, yeah, that's kind of my view on the year and a day. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I also hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, we are still open for Q and A's. Um, if you have any, please let us know. And, uh, I hope that you guys are well and happy and we will be talking to you next week. Many blessings guys.